be here in Boston. Um, you felt like we uh, uh, handled business, took care of what we needed to take care of um, in Omaha, uh, two very good opponents. And, um, you know, and I thought uh, other than the start of the Moorhead game, I thought we played, uh, played pretty well. Uh, now it's uh, on to a very, very good Iowa State team. Obviously, the uh, uh, number one defense uh, in college basketball. Uh, they do that for a reason. Uh, TJ has done just an outstanding job of, of, um, uh, of getting these guys to play so very hard. Uh, it's very impressive. Um, you know, as a coach, I watch their team. And uh, I know what they emphasize. I know what they work on. And, uh, um, you know, you beat the number one seed Houston twice. Uh, and uh, that's that's very, very impressive. Obviously, winning the Big 12 tournament, uh, which was the what, number one rated conference this year. So um, my hat's off to, to uh, Iowa State, to TJ, to that group. And uh, they're led by two very, very good guards. Um, very athletic and, and a team that, uh, like I said, obviously causes teams um, a lot of problems scoring. So uh, we'll have to be very good and uh, excited for the opportunity. Thank you, Coach. We're going to take one right here in front, front right. Oh. You built a great culture here at Illinois. Can you just talk to us about just what makes you as proud of the culture and just what makes this team so different? Yeah, I, you know, I think we've 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 tried to establish a uh, a work ethic. Uh, we're a program of development. We say all the time we're everyday guys. Uh, you see that throughout our building, on our shirts, on our gear. Um, you know, to, to show up and have to work every single day um, to get better, uh, to be accountable, to be responsible. Um, that's that's only done by. Uh, hard work and by a group of guys that, uh, that, that want to put in that time and that want to buy into that. They've, they've set standards for them, for themselves that they want to achieve, not goals, standards. And uh, uh, this group's very mature and handled that. And, and uh, you know, this group is, has been as fun a group as I've ever been around. Um, they've, they've added years to my coaching life. I know that uh, just, just simply, being all, being along on the ride with them has is, is, is made it fun, and, and uh, they've adhered to everything we've tried to do and listened, and, and that makes it really enjoyable. Coach, front left here. <laughs> Annie Costable from the Chicago Sun-Times. Brad, as more eyes are pulled to your team during this run, do you see any issue with your leading scorer who is a represented, representation of this team and this university not being available to the media? No. Um, you know, that's, that's, there, that's obviously a very – uh, serious situation. We're very well aware of that. Um, you know, I think that there's um, uh, com conference. I, I think there's communication that he has to have with his legal counsel and so on and so forth to, to be aware of 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 what's in his best interest and in moving forward. So, and we're going to adhere to that. And and uh, uh, you know, the university's put out. Um, you know their their statements on on those situations and and uh, you know we're going to adhere to all of that and and we're going to play basketball and and do it uh, to the best of our ability and keep trying to win games. Coach right here in the middle. Derek Piper, Atlanta Inquirer. Coach, as you know, number one offense against the number one defense. What do you guys have to do against them to make sure that that clash of strengths goes to your advantage? Well, they're very good. Uh, you know, they're going to play exceptionally hard. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not oblivious to think that we won't turn the ball over a few a few times. Um, you know, you've, you've got to be very decisive in your decisions. You've got to be ball tough. Uh, you got two guys in, the, in their guards that uh, um, do a great job of raking, taking it out of your hands. Uh, they're in constant rotation. Uh, you can't do the same thing every time. They're going to learn, they'll sit on it after – a time or two. So, um, you know, and then you've got to try to avoid the, the pick sixes, you know, um, take the five second count. If you're in trouble, uh, punt it, you know, 24 rows up into the stands, uh, you know, just don't jump up in the air and throw it. 
and let them get an uncontested layup that we can't uh, we can't defend on our end. So uh, they're good, and um, you know then we've got to um, you know we we've, we've just got to be decisive in in our decision making. Just right behind him here, Coach. Brazil and New York Post. Brett, what was your reaction to the accusations and then your reaction to the the court proceedings that allowed Terrence to come back? Yeah, I mean, I've said many times I'm a I'm a I'm a college basketball coach, and you know the when when the, the we found out, um, you know, it was our athletic director uh, Josh Whitman, uh, you know, informed me. Uh, then it was. Uh, uh, to a decision that was that was that was made by the university, and then obviously uh, taken to the courts. And 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 I've said all along I was going to coach uh, the guys I had in the locker room. I was going to be um, uh, the best supporter uh, of of those guys that I coach every day. Um, and we had to find a way to flourish through those through through, through those tough times. And uh, you know then when. Uh, you know, when he came back and joined us, uh, he was a, he was a part of our team again. He's he's always been a um, a great teammate, and and uh, so we um, got him back, and and here we sat today. Coach, right here in the middle. Hi, Coach Marley Weirdo with Seven News in Boston. Good to see you again. Um, Thank you. <laughs> I think part of the novelty of the the tournament is getting to you know see your path, find out where you might be playing, what cities you get to go to. What's the excitement of playing in Boston, playing in a city like this, where it's known for sports and being um, as iconic as it is, and also getting to play on the the Sweet Sixteen stage? Well, I think there's a lot of things to that question. Um, one, uh, you, you're in the Sweet Sixteen. Uh, you're you're in one of the premier sporting events in in all the world, and um, then you get to do it here in Boston, and all you got to do is look up at the rafters. And uh, you're you're doing it in the and I don't know you start looking up through I don't know 57 or 59 and all the consecutive world championships and know what this city is about in terms of basketball uh, you know Larry Bird and Brad Arbach and I Bill Russell and you just you know John Havlicek you just keep going on right on right on down the list and those are all names that are are synonymous with the greats and and so. Um, yeah, it's, it's great that it's, it's, it's here in Boston. It's in this iconic building and, and, and place. And, um, you know, it coincides with the in fact the Celtics are really good again, uh, this year, but, uh, but we're doing it in the sweet 16. And, uh, so really excited about all that. Go ahead. Alec Bussey, 24 seven sports. <clears throat> nice to see you again, coach. Um, obviously I would say it puts a ton of pressure on the ball. How do you prepare for that, um, this week in practice? Well, we've got a pretty good one. Sincere Harris is a is a is a pretty good defender, um, and um, you know, so we, we get to see that. But you don't you you can't replicate truly their their athleticism. Uh, King, um, all those guys up front um, are, are so athletic and 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 quick. Um, but uh, you talk about doing you know certain things and, and creating certain habits and and being ball tough. Uh, but, um, you know, we've got to, uh, uh, apply all those things tomorrow, but it, 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 you know, I think we can with Draven and with sincere, we can get after the ball pretty good in practice, but, um, you know, it, it is a little different when you got size and length, uh, like that up front coming your front, right coach. Hey, Brad, can you speak to the challenges of your coaching staff and also yourself with uh, preparing for the sweet 16 matchup, but also navigating the uh, transfer portal as well? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I spent all morning on the portal, um, believe it or not. So, um, yeah, it, it, I, I don't know. I, it's unfortunate timing, I think. I, you know, it, it is what it is. It was the, the calendar was put in place for a reason. Um, you know, I, I spent late into last night again on, on Iowa State and and um, got up early this morning and, and prepped for practice and our workout today and then, you know, I had to work on the portal. And, uh, uh, you know, we know what we're losing, um, you know, in terms of, of guys eligibility wise. And, and so you're, you're out making those calls and, and uh, you know, there's, there's no, there's no rest in that, you know, it's um, um, you know, when the season's over, it, it gets amped up even more. I mean, there's no downtime. It is, it is, um, 
uh, crank it up. So our staff's working hard at that. Uh, we're paying attention daily to what's going on in the portal. And if you're not, you're you're probably falling behind. Are you the middle coach? Brad, on the note of the portal, uh, you, you brought in transfers and they've had a lot of success. Guys, this year, Alfonso Plummer on the, the Big Ten title team, why do you think it is that you've been able to get the most out of those guys? What is it about Illinois as a program that allows them to play their best basketball? I think we've been really honest with them. I think I don't think we've tried to 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 um, identify. I, I think we've tried very hard to identify high character guys that fit. I think we've tried to find out guys that have specific needs to what we're looking for. And then uh, uh, it's been a great match. It's been a marriage that's that's worked both ways. And and uh, um, you know I think when you're honest with guys, you're not telling them you're going to make them a you know a lottery pick. Or you're you know when they're coming from wherever you're you're honest with them and tell them how they fit and and what the pieces are um you know there's no surprises and uh so it's um you know we've got um, a great situation uh we've had success and um, you know i think that there are people out there who uh, who want to be a part of that Quite time for two more with pete here uh, brad pete thamel from espn uh, charlie baker then say president came out this morning uh advocating against prop betting on individual players in college athletics games. And so they were going to move forward to try to make that illegal. I'm wondering as a coach, if that's something you'd support. 100%. That's, I mean, we have, we have competitive integrity and, and I think that's the one thing that we can, we can never, uh, we can never jeopardize. Um, I think in the big 10, we've, we've, we've been very, very proactive in terms of putting out an injury report. Uh, before games uh, to help protect student athletes and 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 coaches and uh, uh, you know I, I'm a big fan of that I would I would hate to see the day where nobody jumps for the jump ball because of a prop bet and uh, to me that's uh, uh, the greatness of, of college athletics is the competitive integrity that we have and we should be able to keep that Thank we're here to the right coach Matt <clears throat> Matt Rybaltowski with Forbes Sports Money. Based on your comments there on integrity, how serious are point shaving allegations across the sport? And in light of the Temple investigation, did that set off red flags for you and other coaches in the, the community there when that report came out a few weeks ago? Well, I think it'd be you'd be um, buried in a hole if it if if you weren't paying attention to to what goes on. I think that. Uh, speaking personally, um, we've got a athletic administration um, has educated, worked as hard as they can work in helping us uh, as coaches educate our student athletes on it. Um, I think that it's it's um, um, it's real in in terms of it, it's it's something that that if you don't address it, shame on you. Um, and, uh, uh, I think that's all we can do is keep talking about it. Keep, keep trying to educate our student athletes on, on, on what's out there and what's surrounding them. And, uh, uh, but, uh, I know personally, we do an incredible job, uh, of talking to our student athletes about all those experiences and you hate to hear when it, when it, um, uh, when it happens, but, uh, um, again, we're going to do everything at the university of Illinois we can do to try to um, educate our people about it. We'll have time for one more if there's out there. All set. Thank you. Thanks. Good luck tomorrow, Coach. Thank you. In a, about a minute or so, we will be joined by student athletes Marcus Damask, Quincy Garrier, and Coleman Hawkins.
I like it. Superstitious? Yeah, a little bit. That's cool. All right. Whenever you guys are settled, we'll open up the floor to some questions. Right here in the middle. Uh, Zach Brazil in New York Post. For any of you guys, um, how you just describe the way Terrence has played for the last, I guess, month, um, Big East, Big Ten tournament, NCAA tournament, just like what's been like watching his performance? Um, personally, I think it's been great. I think uh, he's done a great job of um, – just being a, a, a dominant player, um, I feel like a lot of times it gets tough in the postseason because everybody knows your actions, but we've been keeping everything pretty simple. And uh, he's done a great job of uh, being a reliable source to go out and, and score at, at any given moment, you know, whether a play breaks down or not. And um, seeing his speed, his physicality, uh, dominate matchups, is, 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 it's been really great to see for sure. Question in the back right. Joey Wagner, 24-7 Sports. This is for both Quincy and Marcus. Uh, Illinois had a tradition a little bit of having transfers come in here and really thrive. So what is it about the program or the coaching staff that allows you guys to have this level of success coming in here? Yeah, I mean, I think the culture. Um, when I first got here, just everybody was always in the gym. Uh, we set our, our standards for the year, too. And, uh, you know, we really just make sure that we were uh, respecting those standards. And I think... That's why I really translate our our, um, our success to, to those standards. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, coach just leaves no confusion on what's expected. You know, as a one-year guy, you don't have a long time to kind of figure it out. And uh, he leaves no confusion. And then, uh, you know, in the portal, he kind of talks about it. So it's kind of appealing as a, as a one-year guy that to see the success that other guys have had and the way that coach uses us. Right here in the middle, fellas. Derek Piper, Line Enquirer. This is for Coleman. Obviously, you guys are the number one offense in the country. They're the number one defense in the country. What has to happen for you to to make sure the battle of strengths goes in your advantage? Uh, I think the biggest thing is is keeping it simple. Uh, I think not trying to hit home runs. Um, you know, making the extra pass, and then being uh, what we talk about ball tough uh, is a big key. Um, you know, live ball turnovers for them lead, lead to buckets, uh, and they score a lot off of those turnovers. Those, we, uh, you know, coach uses the term pick sixes. Um, so limiting those, being ball tough, uh, making simple plays, um, stepping stepping up and, and knocking down open shots because they're going to come. Um, they're <laughs> they're going to um, – those open shots are going to come uh, <laughs> when – when, uh, you know, they double team the booty ball offense that we have and, um, you know, stepping up, making those shots, um, not turning the ball over is our key to success for sure. Guys right here in the middle of the right. Uh, for Coleman and Marcus, um, Alec Bussey, 24-7 Sports. Good to see you again, Coleman. Yes, sir. Uh, Coach talked about how impactful Sincere Harris and Dre Gibbs Lawhorn have been in helping you guys prepare for Iowa State's ball pressure. Can you guys just speak to what they've done in practice to maybe make you uncomfortable heading into Thursday's game? Uh, yeah, I think Sincere does a great job. You know, at times he 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 runs around and does his own thing, but you know when when he's giving us great looks, him and Dre, uh, offensively and defensively, just crawling up in us, um, making our catches tough, uh, and just trying as best as possible to simulate um, those defensive coverages and. Um, you know, trying to replicate how hard teams play. And, um, you know, Sincere is always guarding Terrence and Marcus every day. Uh, same thing with Dre. And then offensively, um, you know, making us work extremely hard in practice. Um, sometimes, you know, I hate guarding Sincere because he's like going full speed and, and I'm at like 50% still trying to get warmed up. And it's like the first drill and he's already trying to like serve you and, and make you look stupid. But now they do a great job of just bringing the energy and intensity and and making us work hard. And not only them two, but the whole entire scout team for sure. Danny Costable from the Chicago Sun-Times. This question's for Marcus. Um, I'm curious how your four years at Southern Illinois prepared you and shaped you, got you ready for, for this final year that you're having with Illinois. Yeah, um, you know, I think I came from a really good program. You know, I, I have a lot of respect for for Coach Mullins and, and the way he ran things and just the way he coached me, uh, I think he did a really good job of just preparing me player development wise and, you know, as a leader to kind of come in and, and make an impact. And obviously the one year situation, uh, 
So, yeah, I think, you know, SIU does stuff at a high level compared to most mid-majors, you know, through conversations I've had with other people, I've learned that. And I think he he as a coach just just really helped me understand the game and, and understand how to come in and impact. John? John Fanta from Fox Sports. Marcus, kind of coming off of that, you obviously have a an envisionment of what you're going to be at Illinois coming into things, but everything happens so quickly in the portal what have you found out about this place, this coaching staff, your teammates that's made this a perfect fit for you? Um, I think, you know, just the way that that coach Underwood kind of treats us, uh, he treats us, you know, more as a professional team than a college team. We're an older team and he kind of, he allows us to be more player led than coach led, I think. And he, he gives us that leeway to kind of control our own destiny and how we operate some things. And he puts a lot of trust in us. So I think just, you know, the, the trust he's put in us just kind of reflects our trust in him. And it's just kind of a two way street. John, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. Go ahead, John. Yeah. Just a quick follow up Coleman, the two guys to your left, you know, there's that dynamic with, with programs of, guys who are back versus guys who come in. Why have they fit so well? Um, I think um, I think they're just being asked to do um, – it's not, it's not like they're being asked to do too much or something they can't do. Uh, I think, um, you know, Quincy's done a great job of spacing the floor, knocking down open shots, being aggressive when he needs to be uh, offensive, rebounding well, and that's what co coaches told him to do, and then – um, Marcus has done a great job embracing the role of the booty ball offense and taking his time and um, just being being stronger than most guards, um, um, you know, powering through, um, um, you know, just using stuff that he works on every single day. Um, so I think just their opportunity and embracing the, the roles that they've been asked to do um, has, has been great and it's worked out well. And, you know, it's kind of morphed us into what we – you know, are today, which is the number one offensive team in the country. So, Quincy, anything on that? So, all right, we'll go right in front, right? Brian Antique, CS of the Sports. Uh, this question is for Marcus and for Quincy. Wait, uh, all right. Sorry. Oh, oh you good, man? Yeah. So just a quick question for you guys. So Brad, obviously, you know, he gets up Terrence about not hitting the uh, defensive boards. Could you just guys talk about just the importance of him doing that and what it does for the offense? I mean, yeah, when he defensive rebound, uh, our offense is way better. Uh, we run in transition, we push the ball, and uh, we don't need him to defensive rebound tomorrow because uh, they're a really good team. Uh, they're crushing the boards at four or five are really good. So the guard's going to have to come help us and get rebounds. But like I just said, when, when Terrence is rebounding, uh, our offense is, is two different things. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, rebounding is a big emphasis that coach has had since the summer. Uh, he definitely gets on Terrence a lot, you know, just because with Terrence's, you know, athletic ability, when he rebounds and we get on transition, you know, we're just a different team. So, you know, coach's ability to kind of press the buttons on what he sees and, and what players can be better at, I think is, is just really good. Thanks. It's back right here. Mike Abelson, New Hampshire Union leader. Quincy, uh, for you, um, what type of performance do you have to have tomorrow for you to consider yourself to have had a successful game against the Cyclones? Uh, just focusing on rebounding. Uh, and, and my defense got to be really aggressive, uh, knock down shots. Uh, but it's going to be about all, all about the team. Uh, I think if we, we communicate, we stay connected, and, and we're aggressive defensively and we rebound, uh, we'll have no trouble to, to win the game. Right here to the left. Yeah, Kevin Sweeney, SI. Uh, for, for Marcus, obviously your your post up game it's something you were able to do at, at Southern Illinois. But where where does that come from? Like, wh how did you develop such a advanced you know low post game as as a guard, and how how has that benefited you at at the highest level? Uh, I give my dad a lot of credit. My dad coached me ever since I was super young. So, and uh, he always kind of talked to me. A phrase he always used was, "There's two positions. You, you're either on the bench or on the court." And uh, he always just talked about how you want to be able to do as many things as possible to stay on the court, you know, and just be versatile, you know, and obviously I have some size. So I think he just did a really good job of coaching me in all assets of the game. And just, you know, I think that was just one thing that, you know, he really coached me in. Here to the right. 
Scott Ritchie, the Champagne News Gazette for Quincy. I know we kind of talked Saturday about your last Sweet 16 experience. And you haven't been in Boston long, but just kind of you compare that year in Indy and the bubble to to now, just kind of the whole thing. Yeah, it's two, it's two different things. Uh, I remember during COVID year in the morning, we had to wake up, go get COVID tests. Uh, we're in a hotel, couldn't go out. Um, now I feel like I can enjoy more uh, the experience because, you know, we, we're traveling. Uh, we got more time for us. Uh, we got time to like go to places and stuff. But uh, just like I said, really grateful to be in that position right now. Awesome. We have time for probably two more throughout there. Any other questions? Go ahead, Cut. I, I guess for any of you guys, it's just kind of a late tip time, 10 p.m. local time. Like, what do you do all day to, I guess, stay ready for that? Nap. Nap a little. Take a nap before the game. A few hours before the game. That's that's for me. For me. Anyone else? No. Yeah, I'll take a nap. Uh, you know, we'll obviously get up and have shoot around. So, you know, we kind of get our bodies moving, you know, get get our minds going and then take a nap. And then next thing you know, it's game time. Take one more in the middle here. For any guys, I know that after getting the Sweet 16, you said that this wasn't the goal, that you guys were obviously hungry for more. Do you feel like that has been shown in the lead up, the practices, that you guys got that that hunger and desire that you want? Yeah, I mean, yeah, we, we've been practicing really hard. Um, I, I feel like everybody's locked in. We're having fun, too. You know, I think that's really important for us to have fun and uh, just to be dialed in on, on the scouting report. But uh, everybody's been tremendous and uh, the coaching staff as well. What else? What else? One, one, take one more here. I'll let you guys head back. Yeah, Robert Rosenthal, line at board. Coleman, this is for you. I don't believe Coach Underwood pushed in his chair when he left a little bit ago, and I'm curious if you have a reaction to that. That's disrespectful. Is this his chair right here? I think uh, Marcus is sitting in it. Mm. <laughs> we'll, in. we'll let him know next time. <laughs> it won't happen again, I swear. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for your time. Good luck tomorrow. Thank Appreciate you. it. Just in closing here, uh, Hammond Communications will post a recording of this presser. What? There you go. <laughs> Raised them right. All right. Hammond Communications will post a recording of this press conference.